Are y'all ready for district? Uh, today I'm going to go over a number sense test from district 2021. And this is a mental mathematics contest. You will only write the answers. Make no calculations with paper and pencil. And start problems require approximate answers. You get plus or minus 5%. So in this video, I will do the first 20 problems, 1 through 20. And as a bonus, I will do some additional problems from the second column, some special shortcuts. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe so you can support the channel. And I really appreciate that. Okay, starting with problem number one, 5,080 plus 911. I'm going to add 80 plus 11. That's 91. So I write to 91. And then I'm going to take care of the hundreds. This is 50, 100 plus 900. That's 5,900. So the answer is 5,991. Okay, number two, 2.5 times 1.6. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this one times 10 and divide by 10. So I'm going to have 0.25, which is 1 fourth. 1 fourth of 16 is 4. So the answer was 4. Now throughout this, when I'm explaining, I'm actually writing some numbers here just for the explanation. You're not allowed to write any of these numbers here. So this is mental mathematics. You only write the answer for these. But I will do it just to show you the explanation. Okay, so for number 3, 1,141 minus 393. Now, many students are taught to borrow and then borrow and borrow. And I caution students about borrowing because sometimes students don't pay back. So if you don't like to borrow, like I don't like to borrow, I'm going to show you a way that I would do this without borrowing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add 7 to the 393 to make it 400. And then I'm going to add 7 to 1141 to make it 1148. So mentally, I'm going to say 1,100 minus 400, that would be 700. And then 48 minus 0 is 48. How cool is that? If you like these kind of shortcuts, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe. 740 is the answer, no borrowing. Number four, four-fifths divided by nine-tenths. So on this one, what you're going to have to do is, mentally, you're going to flip the nine-tenths because you're dividing by a fraction. So you're going to multiply by 10 over 9. When I see the 10, I'm going to cancel that with the 5. I have 2. So 2 times 4 is 8. So that's 8 over 9. So the answer is 8 nines for number 4. Number 5, they want the answer as a decimal. So number 5, they want the answer as a decimal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 5.07 minus 26.5. So you notice the answer is going to be negative. So write the negative first so I don't forget. And then I'm going to do uh, 5 minus 26. That would be a negative 21. And then you're going to have uh, 07 minus 50. That's, or 50 minus 7. That's 0.43. So your answer there is negative 21.43. Number 6. 5 sixteenths is what percent as a mixed number? Remember that 4 sixteenths is 25%. So I need to add 1 sixteenth. And you should memorize 1 sixteenth is 6 and a quarter. So I have 25 plus 6 and a quarter. 25 plus 6 is 31. And we want mixed numbers, so I write 1 fourth. If it was decimal, I would write 31.25 for that one. Number 23. No, number 7. 23 squared. That's 529. What if you don't have that memorized? Then I'm going to show you a little shortcut for any number that has to be squared if you do not have it memorized. So for 23 squared, I would subtract 3, make it a 20. That's easy to multiply by 20. And I would add 3 to the 23, make it a 26. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to compensate for the 3. I added 3, subtract 3. So now I have to add 3 squared. So 20 times 26 is 520, plus the 9 would be 529. And it's the same answer. But I would suggest or recommend that you memorize the perfect squares, at least 1 through 25 or 1 through 30, and then the rest you can work them out. For number 8, 55 times 6 divided by 20, and then add 4. So when I divide by 20, I could break it into factors. I could divide this by 2 and this by 10. 
So what I have, I'm dividing by 20 when I divide by factors of 2 and 10. So 55 divided by 10 is 5.5 times 3 would be 16.5. So I have 16.5 plus the 4, that would be 20.5. So I just write 20.5. Number 9, which is larger, 0.8 or 9 elevenths? Okay, so what is 9 elevenths as a decimal? 9 elevenths is a repeating decimal. If I multiply this numerator and denominator by 9, I have 81 over 99, which is 81 repeating. So 0.81 repeating is larger than 0.8. So the answer there should be 9 over 11. Number 10 is a start problem, which is an approximation. So I need to round off and work this as quickly as I can. So I look, I'm looking at the last two numbers here. 2900 minus 2000, 2900 minus 2000, that's 900. And there's a minus 900, so those cancel out. So your answer is pretty close to 721. That's right in the middle of the plus or minus 5% range. Number 11 is 43 squared, which is 1849. Or you can work this out. You can say, well, that's 40. Subtract 3 and then add 3 to 43, that would be 46, plus 3 squared. And so 40 times 46, instead of writing a 0 down, you write your 9 for the 3 squared, and then you do 4 times 46. 4 times 46 means you double 46 twice. 46 times 2 is 92, 92 times 2 gives you the 184. Number 12, 30% of 40, that's 12. What's 12 minus 30? That would be negative 18. Now keep in mind, whenever you have a percent, you're dividing by 100, or you could divide that by 10 and divide that by 10, factors of 100. So that leaves you 3 times 4, which is 12, minus the 30. That gives you negative 18. Okay, number 13 is a remainder problem. 152 squared divided by 8 has a remainder of what? Well, there's no way you're going to square 152 and try to figure out the remainder. There's got to be a little shortcut here. What is the remainder when you take 152 divided by 8? Well, the remainder is 0, and then 0 squared is 0, so the answer is 0. Now, how do you know that 152 has divided by 8 has a remainder of 0? Well, what I'll do is I'll add 8 to 152 and I get 160, which is a multiple of 8. So 160 divided by 8 has a remainder of 0. 152, which is 160 minus 8, also has a remainder of 0. So, and then 0 squared equals 0. So that's a neat little shortcut there. Number 14, find the arithmetic mean. That's the average for 41, 46, 57. Many students will add 41, 46, 57 and divide it by 3. That's how you were taught. However, it might be easier to pick a base. Here, I'm going to pick a base of 40. Since I'm figuring the answer has to be 40 plus something. So this is 1 more than 40. This is 6 more than 40. This is 17. So what I'm doing is I'm going to average the numbers over 40. 1 plus 6 is 7. Plus 17 is 24. 24 divided by 3 is 8. So then I add 8 back to my base of 40. So the answer here should be 48. So for number 14, the answer is 48. Number 15, you have Roman numerals added together and give you an Arabic numeral. The Arabic numerals are regular numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4. So I have an M, which is 1,000, and I have a D here and a D there. That's 500 plus 500. That's 2,000. So I'm going to have 2,000 and something. So I'm going to write my 2,000. And then I take care of the 100. C is 100. And L is 50. So I have 150. Plus 20. It's 170. Plus the 9. That would be 179. Number 16. 54 squared. Uh, 4 squared is 16. So I'll write a 16. And then... 54 squared would be 50. Anything over 50, I can do 50 squared is 2,500 plus 4. That would be 2,900. 
Now I have a video on squaring numbers in the 50s and that's a little shortcut or numbers under between 40 and 50 is a special shortcut and from 50 to 60. So I'll try to attach a link to this video on how to square those. But you can also do 50 times 58 and then add 4 squared. So if I'm doing 54 squared, I can do 50 times 58. So uh, 5 times 58, that's going to be 290 plus the 16. So 290 plus 16 is 2916. Okay, number 17 is the last problem on this column. And 72% uh, of 77 and 7 ninths. Well, the one way to look at this is take 72 times 77 and 7 ninths. It doesn't matter where the percent is, but I'll move it to the other number. And I know that 77 and 7 ninths percent is 7 ninths. So all I have to do is take 72 times 7 ninths. 9 goes into 72 8 times, and 8 times 7 is 56. Okay, for number 18, we have gallons minus quarts plus pints, and we want the answer in pints. So convert everything to pints. Now, in case you forgot, one gallon has 8 pints, and one quart has 2 pints. So I'm going to have 8 times 2, I have 16 pints here, and... I have two pints for every quart, so minus six there, plus two. So 10 plus two is 12. So the answer for number 18 should be 12 pints. Number 19 is a remainder problem divided by eight. 23 plus 23 times 25 minus 28 divided by eight has a remainder of what? Well, again, there's no way you're gonna multiply 23 times 25 and then add and subtract 23 and 28 and then so there's got to be a better way to do this. So what I'm going to do is find the remainder for 23 times 25. And 25 divided by 8 has remainder of 1. And 23 divided by 8, 23 minus 16 is 7. So this has remainder 7. And then 28 divided by 8 has remainder 4. So I'm going to subtract the remainder there. And then 23, we said divided by 8, has a remainder of 7. So 7 times 1 is 7. So I have 7 plus 7, that's 14. And 14 minus 4 is 10. But you can't write a remainder of 10. 10 minus 8 would be 2. So the largest remainder you can have is 7 when you're divided by 8. So all I'm doing is find the remainder for each of those and then you add and multiply and subtract the remainders as whatever you get. Okay, number 20 is the start problem. It's an approximation, and this is going to be the last one in this video. I will give you some bonus problems from the rest of the test if you hang on to the end here. Uh, 528 times 1930 divided by 731 equals what as an approximation? So I have to divide by 730, so... I'm going to divide by 731 here. And so I have 528 over 730. That's pretty close to 5 sevenths. Now, 5 sevenths is a roughly, 5 sevenths is roughly about 70%. So take 70% of 2,000, and that's 1,400. And that's right in the middle. And that's a pretty good approximation. Okay, let's look at some bonus problems now. Okay, number 29, I'm going to do number 29 and 31 as bonus problems, so we'll call this the bonus round here for hanging on for the end of the video. And so 71x minus 16 quantity squared is going to be ax squared plus bx plus c. That's the binomial expansion, and they're asking for the sum of the coefficients. So in this problem, what you're going to do is you're going to do 71 minus 16 and square that, and that will give you the sum of the coefficients without having to expand it. 71 minus 16 is 55, and 55 times 55 is going to be what? 3,025. 55 times 55. And you know that 5 times 5 is 25, and then 5 times 6 is 30, and that's how you do that one. Okay. 
Okay, so for number 31, you have GCD of 2149 times the LCM of 2149. And so the GCD will cancel out, and you're going to have 21 times 49. And so you're going to have 1 times 9 is 9. And then the outer is 18, and the inner is 4. That's 22. Carry a 2. 2 times 4 is 8, plus the 2 is 10. So all I'm doing is 21 times 49 for this problem, and that's the answer because the GCD cancels out. So remember that the LCM for 21 and 49 is going to be 21 times 49 divided by the GCD. And so what I have here is I have the GCD is being multiplied by that, and the GCD will cancel out. And so all you wind up doing is 21 times 49, which is 1,029. And there's different ways of multiplying 21 times 49. That's one way. Another way you could do it is you could say, well, 21 is 7 times 3 or 3 times 7. And so you have a whole bunch of 7s. So what you really have is you have 7 cubed, which is 343. And then multiply 343 times 3, you get 1,029. So that's another way of doing that one. I hope you enjoyed these two bonus problems on this test here after doing the first 20. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Also, let me know if you have any questions on any other problems. Just leave it there in the comments and we'll try to make a special video for those. And uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe if you haven't already and share with your classmates, share with your teammates, share with your teachers. Students, share with your t teachers. And teachers, share with your students. And that's going to be it for now. Thank you. We'll see you on the next video.